Hi everyone, I'm Tom. I'm a postdoc in Diane Saunders' group at the John Innes Centre, and I'm going to be talking to you today about a tool we've been developing, the Rust Expression Browser. So this work has focused on wheat yellow rust, also known as striped rust. Uh, we chose to work with this because we have a large number of samples of this pathogen. Um, partly that's thanks to working with crop surveillance programs. Uh, so these samples have all been sequenced with the field pathogenomics method that some of you will be familiar with. Briefly, the infected leaf is taken from the field, placed in an RNA later solution that keeps the RNA stable at room temperature for a time. Shipped to us, we extract the RNA in our laboratories and we send it for RNA sequencing. So here we have some information about the field samples we've used to build our browser. So at the top, we have a map of the location that the field samples were collected from. So you can see we cover every wheat growing continent. Though the majority of our samples are from Europe and particularly the UK, that's thanks to our good integration with local surveillance programs. We can also see a plot below it with the date that each field sample was collected. 2013 here was the trial year for the field pathogenomics program. And since then, we've seen a large rise in sampling, uh, peaking in 2016. We also have some historical samples that we've utilized. In the end, we've ended up with 964 field samples that we've used to build the browser with. But we haven't just used those, we've used some diverse data sources. Um, so alongside those field samples, we've taken any data that was associated with a peer-reviewed publication that was available in the SRA. Um, and some infection time courses that have been performed and published by the lab. So this has ended up with 1039 field uh, samples in the browser. But as anyone who's done RNA seq will know, comparing the results of a data set of this size is difficult and involves some technical know-how and a lot of small files. So how do we solve this? How do we make this easier? So we've developed the Rust Expression Browser. And here is the landing page when you go to it. So I'm just gonna highlight some key functions on this front page. So you can enter a gene ID into this box to search for a gene of interest. You can also add another gene in the next box to compare between the two. Also, you may have noticed the multiple genes heading below this. Um, here you can add a number of different genes um, and produce a heat map of expression. Additionally, you don't need to know the gene ID. Um, if you just have the nucleotide or the protein sequence, that's fine. We have a BLAST interface set up running by Sequence Server, which is a really nice user-friendly graphical interface. And it will link you straight to the expression results for that gene. So the browser we built using open source XFIP software that Ricardo in Cristobal's group at JIC developed when they were building the Wheat Expression Browser, which some of you might be familiar with. <clears throat> now with his help, we've made a few tweaks to make our browser, and we've got it online and running with some help from Chava and the informatics team here. So for me, the big strength of doing it this way is that we can simultaneously visualize the quantification results for all our 1,039 samples on the same web page without needing any bioinformatic know-how or any specialist hardware or software. So we've used three reference transcriptomes for the browser. We've used PST130, which is an older reference um, and used only short reads. Uh, whereas PST104E is newer, it used long reads and it's been partially phased, which can be useful in some applications. And we've also used version 1.1 of the wheat transcriptome so we can look at things from the host side as well as from the pathogen side. So I'm now just going to give you some examples of the browser in action. So firstly we have this gene that's been classified as a carbohydrate active enzyme, a KZ gene, uh, which the authors showed enhanced virulence of yellow rust. Uh, so in the study where they reported it they showed that it had high expression early in the infection process, dropping away later. Now looking at our time course samples, um, we can see the same pattern here in this time course. It's high early on and then it drops away. But we do see it reappearing at 11 days post-inoculation, 
which may suggest a function later in the infection process, or it might just be that the pathogen is spreading to new currently uninfected cells. And so it's looking similar to the initial infection process. Uh, we've got another time course here on a different wheat variety. Again, we see it peaking early and falling away, as we expect. And finally, we have these of um, different accession, um, germinating and germinated spores. It's highly expressed. That's to be expected. Um, these are what causes the initial infection, so it's expected they would be high. And how story with low expression, again, you'd expect that these are formed later in the infection process. And here we have um, the same gene, but in the other reference transcriptome. Some of the values are slightly different, some of the error bars are slightly different, but we can see the pattern is mostly the same. So you can utilize whichever reference you prefer. Um, so moving on to the host side, this is looking at the EDS1 genes that were first reported as being involved in the response to mildew by wheat. So I've utilized the same set of time course samples, but cut out those that weren't um, sequenced infected leaves, just to make sure that we do have wheat transcripts present and it's not spurious alignments. So we've got a ternary plot here that plots the expression bias towards each subgenome. And we can see that in general, expression on the D genome is the highest and on the B genome it's the lowest. Curiously, that's the opposite to what was observed for mildew. So that possibly demonstrates a different defense response being triggered. And finally, we have an example here of a heat map, like I mentioned earlier. So this is looking at five wheat PR genes in our field samples, and I've sorted them by confirmed variety. So the varieties we've gone through and checked that they are present on databases so that there's some scope to track them down if they show an interesting expression phenotype. So we can see here, I've also cut it down to those that have free entries, at least on the browser. So from this heat map, the lighter colors are lower expression. So we can see PR3 has the lowest expression and darker colors are higher, so PR1 and PR5 have higher expression. But you can see there's variation between different varieties, uh, showing the strength of using our field samples for this sort of analysis. So to summarize, this browser allows for the easy sharing of expression data from both the yellowrus pathogen and the wheat host. Um, it also allows for visual comparison with a large number of isolates without needing any specialist bioinformatic knowledge and no more hardware than a device that can access the internet and an internet connection. And finally, we're going to be maintaining this so we can add data uh, to it at any point, whether that's something that someone provides us, we just need reads and a bit of metadata and we can get it up. Or it might be new ones we generate or it might be ones we pick up from the literature. Um, so we really hope that this can be a big improvement in opening up this field. And it is available online now at the following address, www.wheat-expression.com. So finally, I'd like to thank the members of the Saunders Lab. Um, they will know I've come to nag them a lot to track down sample information, and they've all been very helpful. Um, Chalva in the informatics team helped us get this up and running and serving to the internet correctly. Um, and Ricardo helped adapt the XFIX software to our needs and squash some bugs that we uncovered through changing things. And thanks very much for listening. Um, if you do have data that you want adding, feel free to contact me or Diane. And thanks again.